And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, Suspense brings you a repeat performance of one of the most controversial plays ever presented over your radio. It is called Zero Hour by Ray Bradbury. After the initial performance, a great number of letters were received. Some comments were highly complimentary, and an almost equal number were not. However, because so many of you did write asking to hear this provocative work of fiction again, we present it, and hope that those of you who have not heard it before will write us your opinion. So now, starring Miss Isa Ashdown, here is tonight's suspense play, Zero Hour. What a game. Such excitement they hadn't known in years. Mink talked earnestly to someone near the rose bush, though no one was there. Then the two little girls, shouting, laughing at each other. Such fun. Such tremulous joy. Mink ran into the house all dirt and sweat. For her few years, she was loud and strong and definite. And her mother, Mrs. Morris, peeling vegetables at the sink, watched with amusement as her daughter threw into a sack old pots and tools and things which were relegated to child play. Oh, my goodness, Mink, what's going on? Oh, the most exciting game ever, just ever. Oh? It's all right, I take these things, Mom. Well, just don't dent them and it's all right. Thanks, Mom, we won't. Bye. All right, dear. Oh, what's the name of the game, dear? Invasion. Invasion? Invasion. And in the garden now, a serious concentration. Mink with an assortment of pots, pans and wrenches, forks, spoons. And her friend Anna, a little younger, tongue in teeth, taking notes on a pad. This, this, and this. What's it say next? Wait a minute, Mink. Well, hurry up. Four, nine, seven... A and B and X. Four, nine, seven, A and B and X. A fork and a string and a hex, hex, hexagonal. A fork and a string and a, a hexagonal. What do we do next, Mr. Drill? And then Mink talking to the rose bush again. And to her own satisfaction, at least, receiving some kind of answer which she relayed to Anna. Triangle. How do you spell it? Oh, any old way. doesn't matter. Now write beam. I haven't got triangle yet. Well, hurry. Zero hours by five o'clock. We haven't got all day. <laughs> then time out from invasion for lunch. Mink bolted down the soup and coincidentally crammed a sandwich into her mouth. Now you slow down, Mink. Whatever's waiting will wait a few minutes longer. But I can't. Drill's waiting for me. Drill? Well, that's a peculiar name. Is he a new boy in the neighborhood, dear? He's new, all right. Well, I don't think I've ever seen him. Uh, which one is Drill? Oh, he's just around. You'll make fun. Everybody makes fun. All the kids do. Well, I don't think that's very nice. Is Drill shy? Well, yes, in a way. I don't know. I gotta go now, Mama, if we're gonna have the invasion. Now, you finish your milk, miss. Who's invading what? Martians invading Earth from up there. Oh, I see. And, um, Drill's a, a Martian? I think so. He's had a very hard time getting here. I should imagine. They couldn't figure out a way to attack Earth. How to get in or something. And Drill says they have to do it by surprise. And even get help from your enemy. Oh, a fifth column, huh? Uh-huh. And all this time, they haven't been able to figure out how to attack until one day they thought of children. Well, that was bright of them. And they thought of how grown-ups are so busy, they never look under rose bushes or on lawns. Oh, that's where Drill is now, uh, under the rose bush? Uh-huh, with all his friends, too. And there's something about kids under 11 with imagination. It's real funny to hear Drill talk. Well, it must be. <laughs> you better run along out if you want to have your invasion before dark. Oh, and bath tonight. School tomorrow, you know. Drill says I won't have to take any more baths. Oh, he does, does he? And we can stay up till 10 o'clock. 
Well, your friend Mr. Drill had better mind his P's and Q's or I'm going to call up his That's mother. That's just it. Drill says you're dangerous because you don't believe in Martians. Just like you think Drill's a kid. Well, he's not. And they're going to let us run the world when they get in. All of us kids. And I might even be queen. Well, that's nice, dear. Now run along. Mom. What is it, dear? Mom, when the invasion comes, we'll have to get rid of you and Daddy. But I'll be sure it won't hurt very much. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hello. Hello, Mary. How are things in New York? Oh, Helen, how nice. Are you in town? Oh, no, I'm in Danbury. I was just thinking of you and thought I'd call. Oh, it's long distance, though you shouldn't. Oh, I can afford three minutes. How's Henry? Fine. And Bill? Oh, just fine. What about Mink? Oh, wonderful. Noisier than ever. Oh, she's got a, a new game now. It's taken the place of hopscotch. Invasion. Is she playing that, too? Well, yes, are yours? Same thing. Some kind of geometric jacks, I suppose. <laughs> Isn't it a screen? You know, all the kids their age are playing it up here. Timmy's got a crush on some guy named Drill, I think that's what it is. Oh, it, it must be a new password. Mink likes him, too. Well, I didn't know it got to New York. Word of mouth, I suppose. You know, kids. Funny you think I got a letter from my sister in Boston. She says her kids are playing it, too. It's just sweeping the country. Well, I... I wonder where they learned it. Mm, don't ask me. All I know is what Timmy told me at lunch. Zero hours at five o'clock. When? Today. That's when the invasion's going to be. Oh, these kids and their imagination. And they talked a little more. Schoolgirl friends. Casual woman talk. But Mrs. Morris was thoughtful. She was thinking of other things, of adults, well, I'm, I'm so of glad. children with imagination, rose bushes, oh, dimensions. She thought of how much she had forgotten about being a child, and she wondered about Not Mink about no and all the kids so who were at that moment called. playing invasion. And a kiss for Mink. I will, and to Bill and the kids. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. An hour drowsed by. It was three o'clock. There was an occasional hum inside the coolness of the house as a car passed outside. The street was lined with good, green, and peaceful trees. And all across the city, in other gardens, in other places, children under 11 were excitedly playing a game, talking to rose bushes and grass lawns, trees, and shrubs. Even children in apartment houses, high in the air, conferring with potted plants, cactus, and ivy. Mrs. Morris finished her housework and went to the kitchen. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Mom. Can I have a glass of water? Of course, I'll get it. Pi R squared, 27, A over 56 to the 7th degree, X, T, 7. What, dear? Oh, nothing, Mom. Oh, here you are. Thanks. How are things going? Who? Huh? The, uh, invasion. Oh, that. Yes, that. Almost finished. When everything's right, Drill said we should be ready on time. Five o'clock? That's right. How'd you know? Helen called me from Danbury. She says that, uh, Timmy's playing it, too. Hey, that's keen. I guess all the kids are, aren't they? No, not all of them. Not guys like Jimmy Wood and Bob Wilson. They're growing up and they make fun of us. They're worse than parents. They just won't believe in drill. They're so smart just because they're growing up. You'd think they'd know better. They were little only a couple of years ago. Well, we'll get rid of them first. Drill says it's okay to kill them first. A mink. I don't like that kind of talk. Do you hear me? I don't like it at all. Oh, now, Ma. I mean it. You keep on that way and there'll be no more playing. You'll have to tell Anna to go home and you'll stay inside until bedtime. I'm sorry. Well, I should think so. Thanks for the water, Mom. Uh, Mink. Yes, Ma? What did those, uh, those numbers mean? What numbers? Those numbers you were saying to yourself before. Oh, that. 
They're the things we have to do to get Joe and his friends out. That's all. Uh, look, dear, why don't you and Anna go down to the drugstore and get some ice cream? You don't even have to use your allowance. I'll pay for it. Haven't got time, Mom. Thanks. Well, I, I'd never believe I'd hear you say that. I gotta go now, Mom. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Mink, I, I want you to tell me the truth. What is this invasion silliness? It isn't silly. It's just a game, that's all. Mom, we're just playing an invasion. Excuse me, I gotta get back now. I'll see you later. It was a game called Invasion. Mrs. Morris's little girl, Mink, was playing it. So was Mink's friend, Anna, and all the other children under 11. It was called Invasion, and zero hour was to be at 5 o'clock. Mrs. Morris was disturbed. She wasn't sure why. But there was something... something about parents shutting ears and eyes to what was happening. And because she was disturbed, she did something she didn't usually do. She called her husband at the office. Hello, dear. Oh, hello, Henry. I'm sorry to bother you, but Miss Maxson said you weren't busy. Oh, not too. I should be able to get home early today. Everything all right? Yes. You all right? I, I'm fine. Me? Oh, she's... Henry. What? Oh, nothing. I, I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. That's all. <laughs> Listen, are you sure you're all right? Oh, Yes. Mink been getting on your nerves? Not really. Well, you tell her to behave, or when I come home, she and I are going to have a talk. As a matter of fact, she's been a little fresh lately, and I don't think it's good. Well, she's playing outside. She's fine. Honey, is something wrong? Why, no, I, I told you I, I was just thinking about you and wanted to talk, that's all. Nothing wrong with that. Not a thing. You go back to your work, dear. I'll see you soon. All right. What time do you think you'll be home? About five, maybe a little earlier. Five? Oh. Hey, what? Come on, what? Well, I... I was just thinking. Nothing, really. Just Mink and you and me. <sighs> Goodbye, dear. You are okay, aren't you? Yes, I'm fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Another hour passed, and it was half past four. The day began to wane. The sun lowered in the peaceful blue sky. Shadows lengthened on the green lawn. Outside it was quiet. The two little girls, more intent than ever upon their endless movement of design and pattern with the implements before them. Mrs. Morris watched from the window, and she had never known Mink to have such powers of concentration. She had turned on the radio and sat drinking a cup of coffee and turned over her thoughts. Children. Children. Children love and hate side by side. Sometimes children love you, hate you all in half a second. Strange children. Do they ever forget or forgive the whippings and the harsh, strict words of command? I wonder. I wonder. How can you forget or forgive those over and above you? Those tall, silly dictators. Those parents. Mom! Oh, what is it, dear? Have we got a piece of lead pipe and a hammer? Well, I, I don't know. They might be in the garage. What do you want them for? Well, if you tell me what for, dear, maybe I, I can... Is Is something wrong? Drill's stuck halfway. If we could get him all the way through, it'd be easier. And all the others could come through after him. But can I help? Thanks, Mom. I can fix it. You better get through, Mink. I want you to take your bath before your father comes home. All right. Now, he's coming home early. And Mink... Mink! Mink had disappeared behind the shrubs. And Mrs. Morris knew it was ridiculous to make an issue of it. Besides, what was the issue? Invasion? Drill? Zero hour? Unaccountably, a cool breeze came up, 
And although normally for that time of year it would have been a relief, Mrs. Morris felt a chill. She closed the window. Time passed. A curious waiting silence came upon the street, deepening. Then from the living room, Mrs. Morris heard... Five o'clock, zero hour, zero hour. It had come, and now it had gone. But was the clock right? And Mrs. Morris, knowing how foolish it was, knowing it, went to the phone and dialed. Oh, silly. It's, it's silly. Time will be exactly 4.54 and 20 seconds. Four fifty-four and 20 seconds. And Mrs. Morris knew that it wasn't as silly as she had thought, because it wasn't five o'clock yet. Not zero hour yet. Then the car drove up into the driveway. Hi, me. How's it going? Hi, Anna. Hi, Daddy. Bye, Mr. Morris. Got a kiss for your old man? Haven't got time now, Daddy. Well, that's a nice thing. What are you doing? We're playing invasion. Oh, swell. Your mother in the house? Uh-huh. Okay, be good. I will. There are in a few minutes, Daddy. <laughs> All right, I'll be ready. Mrs. Morris heard him chuckle. Then he stepped up the walk to the front door. Mary? I'm, I'm in the living room, dear. Oh, hi. Our daughter didn't have time for a kiss. How about you? <sighs> a hard day? No, not particularly. Would you like a cocktail? Oh, you read my mind. Martini? Perfect. Anything exciting happen today? No. Oh, Helen called. Oh. From Danbury, I... I told her she was crazy, but she just felt like calling. Like you calling me this afternoon crazy, huh? Hey, what was that all about? Well, I told you. I, I just wanted to. Mm. Hey, incidentally, what's this new game the kids are playing? Invasion. That's a nice depressing thought. I, is she all right? Come to think of it, she looked kind of funny. She's all right. What's the time, Henry? Mm. A couple of minutes after five, why? No, no, the clock's wrong. By your watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got two minutes, too. I'm probably slow. You got something on the stove? No, I... I just wondered. Honey. Hey. Look at me. What's the matter? Uh, nothing, really. No. No, really. Mink's been up to something. No, of course then not. Then what? I, I guess I'm a little tired, upset, that's all. Do you want to go out for dinner? Oh, no, I, I've got a steak here. I'll tell you what, I'll barbecue it. How'll that be? Oh, fine. What, what was that? What? Well, I, I thought I heard something. Well, I didn't. I, I must have been imagining it. Hey, you are jumpy. Why don't you have a drink? It'll do you good. No, I don't want one. What's the time? Mary, what is this? Now, I mean it. Something's wrong, and I want to know. Oh, it's silly. It, it's so silly, I... I'm on edge, that's all. Mary. I am. I don't like this. That kid's done something, hasn't she? I'm going to get her in. No, no, Henry, please don't. She, she hasn't. It, it's nothing at all. I just... What's that? I, I don't know. Those kids haven't got anything dangerous out there, have they? I noticed a lot of junk lying around. I, I thought it was a game. She wouldn't have done it herself. They made her do it. What the devil? Well, maybe you better go out and tell them to stop playing now. It's after five. You, you tell me to put off the invasion until tomorrow. Tell her. It is coming from outside. What are they up to? I'd better take a look. Mink! Mink! Good Lord! Ah! Bombs! Ah! Bombs! They're bombing! No! 
No, it, it's upstairs. I know it is. In the attic. That's where it is. Mary. Mary, it is not up there. Mary! He ran after her, confused, not a little frightened. She seemed to know something. In the attic. That's where it is. Her mind had worked that quickly. Any excuse to get him away from the outside, to get him upstairs to the attic in time. And outside, there were more explosions, and they could hear the children screaming with delight. It is not in the attic. It's outside. Minx out there. What's the matter with you? No, no. I'll show you. Hurry! Get inside, quick. Now we're safe until tonight. Are you crazy? Why did you throw that key away? Oh, maybe we can sneak out later. Maybe we can escape. For heaven's sake, the kid's out there. Do you want her to get killed? Oh, you don't know. You don't. We've got to stay here. We've got to. It's horrible. We've got to. You've got to stay here with At me. At this point, I don't know how the devil I can get out. Where's uh, that light? Oh, be quiet. Please be quiet. They'll hear us. They'll find us. Wendy, please. Well, who's going to answer the telephone? There's that noise again. Oh. It's in this house. Mary, what is this? Mary, what's happening? You know, now answer me. Stop it, Mary, stop it. Somebody's downstairs. Who's down there? Who? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, hush. Please, please be quiet. They might go away. Please, please. And between his wife's terror and the electric humming from below, Mr. Morris felt a great fear. They trembled together in silence in the attic. Mr. and Mrs. Morris, parents of a little girl. Then they heard steps coming up the stairs. And a voice. Mommy! Daddy! Where are you? And a queer, cold light became visible under the door crack. The strange odor and the alien sound of eagerness in Mink's voice was almost more than they could bear. Each wanted to scream. Mommy! Daddy! And another sound. And the attic lock melted. Mink. Mink with bright little eyes and tousled hair peered inside. And behind her, tall, wavering blue shadows. Frightful shadows. Suspense, in which Miss Isa Ashdown starred in tonight's presentation of Zero Hour. Next week, Suspense will bring you the story of a bomb and the man who carried it to its ultimate destination. We call it the Lunch Kit. Be sure to listen to Lunch Kit next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Anthony Ellis. Tonight's script was written by Ray Bradbury and adapted by Mr. Ellis. The music was composed by Leith Stevens and Lucian Morowick and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear, Paula Winslow, Eve McVeigh, John Daner, and Beverly Hanley. Sound patterns were by Bill James and Ray Kemper. This is the CBS Radio Network.